I didn't know oh, that. Okay. You know, since you told me that, I don't hardly like you. <laughs> <laughs> you got a good head on your shoulder. <laughs> I drink apple juice and cheese. Take one balance. Bill, if you remember this one, I bet you do. If no one else on earth does. <laughs> oh, what kind of a noise, a noise, an oyster. An oyster in the zoo. A question I'd like to ask you What kind of a noise a noise an oyster An oyster in the zoo I really mean it An oyster in the zoo <laughs> That's a real folk song Oh <laughs> flame
Christ did no show, I went below, it was the sadness half. I think the town of Yuba Dam has no right on me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, he learned that from his grandfather, where he told me. Yeah. He sure knows a bunch yeah. of odd Who did? funny songs. Bob Bowie. Bob, Bob Bowie, yeah. Well, well think... he comes from Nebraska, and that's an odd country, sure enough. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you could learn anything. I bought the sheep shearing town in Montana. <laughs> I just know one part of it. When it's time to shear the sheep, When the jaybirds sing again their sweet refrain When the grass is on the knoll And the gopher's in his home That's when I'll be coming back again So you better watch your step while I'm away, dear I'll be checking up on you So be waiting for me, honey. Don't take any wooden money. When it's time to shear the sheep, I'm coming back. <laughs> 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 Boy, that's a damn yellow. Yeah, that's a good song. You don't hear too many people singing. No. I used to know a bartender, old Tommy Coates, and when he'd get tired of bartending sometimes, late at night he'd jump on top of the bar and sing. <laughs> this town is full of guys who think they're mighty wise just because they know a thing or two. You can see them every day Going up and down Broadway Telling of the wonders that they do There's con men and there's boosters There's card sharks and crap shooters They congregate around the metropole They wear fancy ties and collars But where they get those dollars well, that's their old ace down in the hole. Some of them write to the old folks for coin. That's their old ace in the hole. Others have girls. In the old tender line, that's their old age in the hole. They like to tell you about the trips they're going to make from Florida to that old North Pole. But their names would be mud Like a chump playing the stud If they lost that old age in the hole When I sing that in Mountain Dew, some people look guilty. I don't know what's wrong with that. <laughs> <laughs> the more you hang around any place in this old town, the more you'll see that what I say is true. They'll greet you with a smile, but you know all the while they're just trying to pull something new. You always hear them telling of lemons that they're selling. They spend a hundred bucks a day for clothes, but you know that they're lying. It's the aces does the buying And dress them from their head down to their toes Some of them run to the old folks for coin That's their old age in the hole 
Mothers have girls in the old tender line That's their old age in the hole They like to tell you about the trips they're going to make From Florida to that old North Pole but their knees would be mud like a chunk playing stud if they lost that old age in the hole. The second guy I ever heard sing, a friend of mine used to sing that. <coughs> Never heard of him. Oh, you're right. Your people are singing. Uh, he's the only one I ever heard. <coughs> Slim Pickens told me that he ran into a guy in Reno once who claimed he wrote that. Guy's name was Diamond Spike. Well, that's a hell of a handle. Well, he's in his early 1970s. Yeah. Uh -huh. pretty old. yeah Who was your friend's buddy saying it? His name was Jack. Uh, what was his name was Raymond Davis. He was little Earl Spud's uncle. That's what he was. And he'd, uh, he'd sing that song. He said, well, that's been the first one I've heard sing it since I've heard him sing it. I used to sing that. Well, Tommy Coates is bartender at the Pickwick <laughs> Bar in Burbank, California, singing. But boy. And he worked in pictures most of his life. He was a, this guy that I was. He had a boy who rode bulls and bareback horses, got killed riding bulls. Glenn, huh? this old guy just about lived his life with that ace in the hole, mm -hmm. too. Boy, he was a gambler boy from a way back. Well, he got caught for bootlegging. He got caught for bootlegging. Well, that was gambling too. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, they <laughs> threw him in jail. And this guy turned him in. This guy turned him in for bootlegging. When he got out of serving that six months in the county jail, and and he got out of there, boy, I tell you, he's a big old long tall fella, and. Uh, yeah, boy, he got that guy, boy, and he literally pulverized him for putting him in jail for stuff. Turned my men, little, <laughs> little Earl went down there with that spud. And it, we went down his house, he had them. He also made homebrew and so. And spud stole a part of some bottles of homebrew, you know. He <laughs> didn't have no bottle opener, tapped them on the fence post, you know. <laughs> Break the top off. <laughs> Drink beer, glass, and all down in West. <laughs> you know, when I first moved here, it made me so mad thinking that it was a dry county. To me, that just seemed un American. <laughs> <laughs> just seemed plumb unreasonable, and I just was enraged. And I made a, I started making home brew. <laughs> and I saved all my empty bottles and jugs and everything and in the old house across the road from where I lived in the attic I had a thousand bottles of <laughs> home brew. <laughs> and, and, and it didn't it wasn't any good while I was working in the crock it was the best smelling, best tasting beer there yeah, ever was. But that, after right? I bottled it it just all went bad and it was like drinking a rope or something. <laughs> <laughs> that was terrible. <laughs> So I, I, but once in a great while there'd be a bottle that turned out right, and I then I got nervous about having so much on hand, and I decided to take it out on the slope in back of the old house down in the woods and pour it out. But I didn't want to pour out a good one, so I opened each bottle and tasted it to make sure it wasn't a good one. <laughs> And I carried beer all day down there and tasted them and opened them and poured them out, you know, downhill so they'd empty. And I wound up at the end of the day sitting down there amongst the ticks and the snakes and what have you and just a damn drunk sitting there singing and bellering and hollering. They must have heard me for ten miles. And a thousand damn bottles empty just pouring out down the hillside. And I never did find a good one. They all tasted bad. Boy, you made a friend now. But those guys like that a lot of them. And you take that talk. He was a good hearted yeah. man, boy, do anything to work. Whoever, whoever but he was a mean son of a gun, too. Boy, he'd fight you. 
and he could whip. He was ruptured on both sides. <laughs> Crippled. God dang it, I've seen a man could fight some of my life. <laughs> Pretty tough, huh? Uh, I've seen him more take after guys, boy, I mean, he'd go after. But yet he'd do, he'd do anything for you. Huh. Where did he live? Where did Earl's relatives well, live? We was raised up, well, little Spud, he moved in. Uh, uh, we lived there in, uh, outside of Mulberry there on the farm. Is that where he Yeah, lived he moved in, in there. He moved in there and uh, joined farms. <coughs> so they just rented there and joined farms. That's where we started running. He was 10 and I was 12 when we started running together. And uh, his daddy was a boot. His uh, uncle was a this bootlegger that lived down the road. We hung around there a lot. Not to drink, but you could do this to them. But Spud was a character. <laughs> I'm telling you, he's seen, I've seen him. He's a little bitty guy. What'd you say he weighed when you went to the CCC camp? About 75 pounds. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm telling you, they didn't come too big for him to back at them. Boy, I see one day came to see. They said something at the radio station up there to him about something out of what it was. He backed up to this announcer boy and he pulled his guitar back and says, I'll bust your brain right on the floor. <laughs> and little thing, you know. And he'd go out and fight. He'd go out and fight for the night and he'd always lose every time. <laughs> Couldn't whip nobody. <laughs> and they'd just, they'd just pulverize him. <laughs> I was in Japan with a guy from Puerto Rico named Raul Gonzalez. And I didn't know it when we started running around together. He was kind of a sex maniac. <laughs> <laughs> and he was always trying to pull off a rape, but he was a little bitty guy. And kind of I couldn't make it. <laughs> and he was always thrashing around, you know, and then the girls would always get tickled at him and just laugh and just hold him at arm's length. But he's just standing there churning, you know. God, he was a crazy guy. <laughs> That'll tell you what, I'll match the crazy guys I've known with anybody. <laughs> Spud was something else. Yeah. We was at Canby C and we was making good money for the day there. And there was with the follies there. But his brother come in one day and told him he was a, what is these people, you know, they're a hypochondriac. Can't keep from stealing. Can't keep from stealing. And him and his brother. Well, I thought the hypochondriac stood out in the rain all the time. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, they went down there. Him and his brother, him and his brother, they went down there and robbed the Western Auto Store down in Kansas City. I mean, robbed it. And it come out in the paper the next day Western Auto Store robbed on Independence Avenue in Kansas City. So Spud looked at Russell, his, we always called him Pistol Pete, his brother, and he said, let's do it again. Some damage, right? He said, all right, let's rob it again. And they went back down there after they'd come out, you know, and the reports and everything had went in on that store then robbing it, and they'd come back out, and they went and robbed that thing. Next day, Kansas City paper come out, thief returned. <laughs> 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 and then one day up there, he got me fired at Debbie after Debbie. He was, I was a good hearted little guy, but he could do the craziest thing I've ever seen in my life. And he got up on some building up there in Topeka and was watching some guy. He had a good looking woman in there or something. You could understand this. But he's watching the guy clean his gun up on a roof. So the guy sent him out there. And so he went on past his his gun, turned that gun on, boy, and just blowed right over. I don't think he shot to kill him. And boy, that got me. <coughs> me and him both fired cold flat right off that station. And <laughs> so I didn't say much. I went on back into the boss in there. I, I knew if I could get back on, I could pull him back in. <laughs> so I went back in. I said, I didn't have nothing to do with that. And so I got my job back when I got it back in. I got him back in again. Yeah. He was all right. He was just had a tendency that way. Sounds <laughs> like a character. Oh, right? he was. He was. He got killed in a car wreck, didn't he? Yeah. What was that about '68? Yeah, he got killed going on a personal. Huh. But uh, yeah, it's going. Yeah, it's on.
Oh, here. I got you. Oh, you're even outside. Yeah, I just said, yeah. So she's got the weather. Chilly out there. It's clouding up a little bit. Yeah. Let me get a good tune.
like that hee haw program. He's supposed to have, now they put that on every week up around Kelly. Yeah, but, but uh, now, they, they have tape it in two weeks' time. Yeah, but uh, what does the, the television station now, do they pay them for that tape? I don't really know. Yeah, all local stations have to pay the network for stuff, but they have to take certain stuff. I, uh, they still have to pay for it, yeah. Yeah, well, that's a system of paying for it. That he haul see, that makes them guys, that puts them up there where they really get the money. Oh, Springfield now, because it took her about an hour to get Springfield, yeah. and then she'd go around Glenstone, catch the bypass, and head right on, hit 65 bypass, and stop at uh, Les, turn at Leslie, like we did. Thank you. 
one of them they beat up two of them in the gray man and the team when they carry the pain and the pain they jump them up Because I always thought like hey Rue, but if you use it in another kind of text, it's yeah. just like calling a country guy yeah. a fool or something. Yeah. You know. But a Rube to the carny is anybody that a carny. Like Tom Phillips, one of the wise wobblies in the world. Mark Ross. Now he was, you know, we about remembered it. He was just two blocks north of my house. Saturday night when Bill was up there. Yeah. house, I thought. Well, this very well. She was really hoping she could come down for this part of the tour. She was almost up to the old Hickwick house.
<laughs> I like to hear do that. G. Get G. I can't do it. G. You know, that was D, D or A is all we can do. D or A is all I can go. Oh, you can? Can't you? I'll <laughs> reach in my bank. D? Do a D? Yeah.
not like the sugar. <laughs> 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 this kid's <is> Four or five oh, generations. I didn't see the charge. Going Wasn't it maybe really? the 17th or 18th? It should have because it was more like the 19th. I know. Oh, but in early 20th. It might have been <laughs> barely <laughs> moved They the started down. back there, but. Uh, of course, we weren't well, riding anything electric on the car, car, really. Probably made them up we, until we the 30s. The radio made the 30s just a little bit, but we did have lights on. No, of the 20th. A good, strong battery will just lights on the motor. What well, I've got probably yeah. 50 or 60 well, years old. What oh, was that guy? Mm -hmm. I found that out. Are I they pretty good for that? <laughs> I didn't break a bell. Generally speaking, yeah. Mm -hmm. I went and got it. There's an I old man in Mount Gilbert. I put a 
I've been fixing it up now. I put an it's ebony, ebony uh, fingerboard on it. He's a good old guy, but he sounds <laughs> awful. Well, it's wrong. I've been bought it. Old Miss Mr. Hill. It's old and in the shop. He's over there and back at uh, what was Western Auto. He rebuilds the generators and all that. And he rebuilt one for me and put it in. And it wouldn't charge. I'll put this thing to see what it sounds like here. And I drove it home. The next day, nothing I'll put you started. Huh? I'll put you change. Got back down there. And I said, Boy, it just depends work. on how much how they stay stacked up. Right. Now, these right. have been on for so a long time, but they're yeah, still all right. It all. Oh, and, uh, here. And he put it on the test and the Ordinarily, I wouldn't play them that charging. long. Though. But these have stayed good. They're a good experience. Alternator can run either way and charge. Oh, I see. The generator runs one way and charge. Oh, I see. And uh, I said, my generator don't work. Oh, that works out. That's not a generator, that's an alternator. I said, well, whatever it does, it's going to do it. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Right next door. And Judy and Jean was all 
excited about and I can't I didn't see if they wanted to use A and B. They use a cake one. But I got a yard just singing all that I 
know you be missing my love and I'm kissing you. Oh, I'm you'll be so alone. Just for me home. I thought you meant the blue Guadalupe and Mexico. Yeah, well, it's the same thing. Same thing, but yeah. The same people, same kind of people. I know you're I love the name of Kissing. I don't want me back. Oh, yes. What a big day. You'll be so long. Try to sell it to the person. Call me home. I don't care what you're doing. One of these days. He went out and drank up five quarts of this and went out and sat out on the curbstone, just sitting there and murmuring and talking to himself. What he said, I couldn't tell. But pretty soon I seen him jump up and I heard him loudly yell. Shut the door, coming through the window. Shut the windows that come in through the door. Shut the doors come in through the window. Oh my gosh, there's no room for me anymore. Some of the boys was having a friendly dream of crabs. And out of the front door there came some gentle raps. Man and fella started hunting holes under the table and we're not. But as they hid there, they sang this chorus to shut the doors. Come in through the windows. Shut the windows. Come in through the doors. Shut the doors. Come in through the windows. Oh my Lord, they don't know anymore. His husband was waiting outside the nurse you ward at the hospital and the nurse come out and said, Man, you know something? He said, You're the father of a bouncing baby boy. The man's heart was just filled with joy. But when she come back a little bit later, he said, Yeah, the, the boy, you got twins. The poor man hung his head inside. When she come back a little bit later, she said, you know so? She said, you got triplets. He pulled my loud and shy. Shut the door. They're coming through the window. Shut the window. They're coming through the door. Shut the door. They're coming through the window. swim a stroke. <clears throat> he was so upset. Oh my help, help, help. I'm drowning. Oh help me. And a great big pussy cat come along, rich in that barrel of whiskey and pulled a little bitty mouse out. Little mouse said, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. 
And I said, I'm not going to eat you now because I ain't hungry. But said, now tomorrow morning at 9 o'clock, I want you for my breakfast. Then I said, I sure would be. I, oh my, yes, that'll be fine with me. So the next morning, 9 o'clock, what do you think? No little mouse. At 9, 10, what do you know? No little mouse. At 9, 15, no little mouse. That pussycat was really getting disturbed. Where's he at? He promised. About that time, about 9, 1, 15 and a half. The big old pussycat looked upon a great big high rafter and I said that little mouse just grinning like a chissy cat. Pussycat said, why wasn't you here at 9.15 like you said? I said, I won't tell you something, pussycat. I said, I was so drunk, I said, I didn't know really what I was saying. <laughs> 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 Long time ago. <laughs> that, that's like the guy that had me paint a sign on his truck once in Nebraska. Yeah. I got uh, Walt Hill, Nebraska, a few days before the rodeo and painted rodeo pictures on all the windows and then made the rodeo that weekend on the 4th of July weekend. And some local guy come up to me on the street and he said, uh, I've seen you paint them pictures, and I want you to paint a picture on my truck of a corn picking machine and my phone number. Oh, he, that was in a bar at night, and he was just drunk as hell, falling down drunk. And he says, now you paint that on my truck tomorrow morning, and he told me where it was at. He says, what do you charge me for that? He want on both doors. And I said, ten bucks. He said, okay. He said, I want it. And I says, now you're awfully drunk. Are you sure you really want that? He said, yeah. He says, I know I'm drunk, but I know what I want. And you put it on both doors. And I said, okay, you're certain you want it. He said, yeah, I do. You're not too drunk to know what you want. He said, no, I know that I want that. So the morning I went out and painted that damn corn picker, I, he told me where it was at, so I made a sketch of it on both doors and his phone number. Then I went and looked him up in the tavern. And I says, I got your sign and the corn picking machine on both doors of your truck. And he said, oh, hell, I didn't want that. And I says, well, last night you swore up and down you wanted it on there. He says, oh, I was drunk last night. I didn't know what I was saying. And I says, yeah, we talked about that, too, and you swore you still knew what you wanted. And he says, well, I can't pay you for the sign because I was drunk. I didn't know what I was saying. And I says, well, why don't you sit down in the booth here and I'll get us each a beer and we'll talk about it. He said, okay, and he sat in the booth, and I went and got myself a beer. And I went over and stood right above where he was sitting and slightly behind him, and I said, all right, you bastard, put ten bucks on the table. I'm standing up with the bottle in my hand, and you're sitting down. <laughs> and he laid ten on the table, and I picked it up, and I sat there, stood there and drank my beer. And I said, now behave yourself, and I walked away. <laughs> <laughs> Did you always walk away from situations like that? As long as you got the bottle in there, you have the ancient But there was an old guy in town there, a big, old, old man. And I, when I was doing the rodeo pictures, I went to put one on a restaurant, and this old guy was sitting there, and he said, you don't want one of these damn pictures. And the guy running the place said, well, I guess I don't want one. I, said, okay. I went outside, and that guy came out, and I was kind of perturbed. <laughs> and I didn't have no woe in them days. And I says, you old bastard, you sure stuck your nose in my business. I said, I'd have tear your head off. And he just looked at me and walked away. And that night I saw him in a tavern there. 
And a young guy ran up to him and drawed back to hit him, and before he could deliver that punch, that old man stuck one on him and skidded him across the floor. <laughs> and I know it would have killed me if he'd hit me that hard, because that guy never twitched. Boy, lady, not cold. <laughs> so I guess he was, yeah, he was pretty nice to me, just taking the test and then walking off. You know? <laughs> yeah, yeah, doing yeah. your favor. Yeah, he said he did. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> right. He was in an instant. But that night, there, at night there during the rodeo, right on the main street, the cowboys lined up on one side and the town folk on the other side. And anybody got out in the street had to fight. <laughs> and Pistol Holiday and Billy Phillips was out there fighting. And uh, Billy knocked a, no, Pistol knocked a man down. And a woman ran out of the crowd to hit him. And he drawed back to hit her. And Billy Phillips grabbed his arm and stopped him and said, don't get that wound, and drug him back off the street. And nobody went to the other side of the street. Well, years and years and years later, I went to South Dakota and I hauled Book Miller Cannon and a few people with me up to South Dakota. That's a story. And that was a great story. And all by that. God, I... Going up there, I went through Walt Hill, Nebraska, and I pulled off the main highway and went in there, and we ate in a restaurant where me and Pistol Holiday had got thrown out of years and years before. And the lady waiting on us, I said, do they ever fight in the middle of the street here anymore? She said, every Saturday night. <laughs> And that was a tough town, sure enough. <laughs> <laughs> well, I remember telling you about that trip and book rolling. I started to one time. Oh, God. We played the best stories ever. <laughs> the University at Brooklyn, South Dakota, and all these people interested in folk music to line this thing up, you know. And I, they called me a couple of months before I went up. And about three weeks before I went up, they called me again, and we'd, we'd, uh... Bring me one way. Yeah, me too. And, uh... There's a couple in the freezers I put there to get the roof on. Well, there's probably cold enough. Yeah. In, anyway, a few weeks before I went up, they called me again and said, Hey, could you bring Book Miller Shannon up? And I said, Probably. He says, could you bring a fiddler? And I says, I'll try. He says, can you bring Leslie Wall? And I said, okay, if you'll go. I said, what can you pay him? And he says, well, we can. We got money to give him $75 each. And this was back about 67. And I was getting $350, so I thought, well, I'll see if them guys will go for that, and I'll pay the gas both ways and feed them and put them up on the way up, because I'm making more, and they can at least feed themselves coming back. So I thought that was fair enough, and I'd already made my deal with them. So I got them three to go with me, and we went and played that little folk festival. <laughs> and all these professors and everybody, and then, this was before the hippies hit the colleges, and everybody in the crowd wore a suit and a tie, every school kid did. <laughs> and they looked at them guys and couldn't believe they was seeing what they saw, you know. <laughs> and they throwed a party for us tonight of the festival. And we're sitting around there, and, and, and uh, one of these guys, uh, Percy Copeland, he, he couldn't play the fiddle, but he could play fiddle tunes on a harmonica. He was the only one I could get to do that. That would go. And we're sitting around at this party with all these professors, and one of them that had been down here many times said, What happened to your daughter Wilma that sang so good? Oh, she jumped up and got married, moved off to New Mexico. She's sure sorry of it. She said, how come? She says, oh, down there, them people can't even talk. All they can do is chipper jabber. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and then, uh, but then Book Miller Shannon was sitting there. Now, he's gross. He sure is. <laughs> and he listened to that, and, and an old Book Miller says, well, it's just as well she got married. 
Once they get it in their head, they'll soon have it in their ass anyway. <laughs> and everybody was sitting there and just... This was to this crowd, this whole crowd. Yeah, well, not to the crowd, but at the party. There was a hell of a bunch of people. Pretty decent people. <laughs> <laughs> what I said, I sent you a copy of the yearbook. Why yeah. You know? <laughs> well, I did, they didn't send me one, but I saw one the oh. next spring. And, and there was a page given to that little folk festival. And it said, Glenn Orland came up from Arkansas with some folk. It was a folk festival, and they was the pure quill. <laughs> the pure quill. <laughs> So, Bill, Bill and Art have heard this. So, just a couple of years ago, this Glenn Rickman, this blind fiddler that's in that uh, issue of uh, Bittersweet, there's this woman who lives down there who teaches SMS, and her daughter goes to school in Massachusetts. And she was back visiting in Crane, or where it was, and had a visitor with her and wanted to bring him down. I happened to be down there playing with him. And said he wants to bring his flute, which yeah. fine, you know. <laughs> so we're sitting in there, and and uh, Glenn and Shorty are just as all <laughs> down old arcs as anybody you'll ever see. Just fine people, you know. Mm -hmm. you know. Well, they walk in, he comes in with this kid and they head on sandals and these frayed, blue cut off blue jeans, and he had on some kind of a top. I don't know what it was. And real fuzzy hair, you know what I mean? And he, I always remember he walked to the door and she said, this is so-and-so, and he went, howdy. Mm -hmm. That was his country, you know. Yeah. I left right after that. I don't know how <laughs> Glenn said he didn't play too long. <laughs> uh, resigned you suspiciously. What'd you say, Art? Uh, I didn't say it. Are you going to eat that popcorn? I'm going to try a little bit of it. <laughs> Maybe a I thought you was on mm -hmm. my side. Mm -hmm. Went away from it. <laughs> See, they put the fiddles away, and I didn't even get to play. But. <laughs> <laughs> I'll let you play my banjo. Get it out of reach. Can't play. Before you can do any damage. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'll do something with that auto heart. It's a little bit. I worked with somebody. The, before I moved to Arkansas, I worked with a feller in California that was mm -hmm. up in his 80s. Mm -hmm. Once in a while, I used to say to him, I said, uh, I forgot what's his name. Lou. Say, Lou. Why don't you tell us about the gold rush days? You know, say, I ain't that old, I ain't. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, Angie Dickinson, the actress, worked yeah. there? And that's where she got to acting? Uh-huh. And one day, me and Lou were sitting eating lunch, and Angie says, Hi, boys, and walked by us, you know, to her car. <laughs> and old Lou sat there looking at her, and he said, you know, Glenn, he said, my wife used to look like that. <laughs> <laughs> but it's been a hell of a long time. A century or two. Something like that. My God, he had done some stuff. He surveyed, helped survey San Bernardino County, the largest county in the United well, States. A, mm -hmm. right. And uh, was, it's so big that the curvature of the earth caused them to lose some land that came out where there's gaps in there, you know, where you can't <laughs> come out plumb square. <laughs> I bet I know more useless information like that than anybody on there. You could just about, you'd probably be fine as a 
teacher in the university because uh, <laughs> <laughs> that's what they specialize in. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you should just I'm do that day in and day out and then give them a degree at the end of it. Work, 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 <laughs> you ever tell you that story? Probably I'll be on these students running around for the same use of information. Yeah, yeah, right. I met a dude down on the street the clock was striking nine. I said, come on, hey, see, how do you think it's fine? Must have had a gun, because I hit the bar to get home. I shot a gun, I had to find a gun in the way. Good morning, Captain. 
singer with some guy now. Yeah, they're all good. They get that festival out in Arizona. Arizona. There's one at Tulsa. Where is it at, man? What? That festival out in Arizona. You've been to it. No, I've never worked at Paso. El Paso. El Paso. El Paso. El Paso. El Paso. Texas. But Tucson Meets Yourself is a That's Tucson a local festival, but oh. you got to live there to, at least in the state, to play it's on. It's kind of traditional. They have a Mexican one week and an Indian one week. Oh, I draw runs for a week, but... Did you see them out there? Yeah. Was the people there that run the festival in El Paso? Yeah, they were there. I just moved. Yeah. yeah. Frank smoked a cigar. One of my favorite people. <laughs> you are? Yes. No laugh, my God. No matter where you're at or what the circumstances, he's always got a car and the. Oh, that's true. And the, the beer, and right? It's always full of beer. You know? <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank God there ain't nothing. Full of beer and that. cigars. Yeah, right. <laughs> And it takes him about an hour and a half to get stuck. <laughs> no matter where he's going, he's got cluttered around his room. Except one time, Charlie's seen him now, I said, well, we'll, we'll just go over with Frank. It always takes him forever to get started. You know, we don't need to worry about it. So, so we sat out there, and I got to sit there for like an hour. I said, I'm about to burn to death. You know, we'll go up and sit Oh my God, he's left. <laughs> he left us. Yeah. He, that's the only time in the history of the world that he's been known to get ready and leave <laughs> when he said he would. <laughs> was this in Washington or El yeah. Paso? Washington? No. They just take a few yeah. times to death. He'll say the damnest thing. He, he does. He comes up with it. He gave Joe Wilson a copy of his record and said, I'm riding all around this so Joe won't be able to sell it like he does with most of the records. <laughs> <laughs> I got his record in the And a year later, I had to tell him what I thought about it. <laughs> <laughs> it's all Army songs. All Army songs. And I heard some of them songs. When I was, yeah, I heard some of them songs when I was in the Army. And I said, by God, Frank. <laughs> Now that really sounds like the way guys sounded singing in the yeah. barracks. <laughs> I didn't tell him the last two words, but by God, that was real. That was real. He's sorry, sorry. It was real. But I like him. He's a, he's a good guy. Oh, <laughs> You wouldn't expect him to be a superintendent of a park. Oh, oh, oh. Yeah. He, exactly. He's trained as an anthropologist. I know he's got PhD. Most of ours. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, they cut down their travel. Mm -hmm. that 
day I, first day I made 80 bucks. Wow. <laughs> and on 49, that was a lot of money. Yeah. And my God, that night we went to Old Prairie, which is a couple blocks from downtown Douglas, and whooped it up. <laughs> and he, he was from Montana. He never went over the border before. And the instant he stepped across, he got scared. Yeah, he could just see his hair stand good up time, like good that. Time. And somebody was following us. And we walked the, almost the whole length of the town until the businesses give up. And this guy's still behind us. And he said, said so you do your right back on I, I wouldn't do it. I went no, no, with it. He grabbed me and around huh? the corner. I didn't we go nowhere with it. When the guy oh. came past us, he reached and grabbed him and yanked him. Played with it a little bit and put it back. Huh. And he thought he was trying to waylay us. Can you imagine one guy trying to waylay two? Yeah, right. Oh. <laughs> and shook the guy and the poor fellow almost fainted. And he said, what are you falling yeah. for? And he said, I just want to show you where the quarrels are. <laughs> and he dug that, so. <laughs> but Buck Rutherford then, the next night in Alwa Prieta, he conquered the town by himself. <laughs> yeah. Sure did. He had him treated. <laughs> <laughs> I guess they still mark time from the time Buck Rutherford. Took <laughs> care. Yeah, but that is a dandy place. It ain't no high pressure. Nobody dragging in by the arm. Oh, so really? That's stuff. unusual on the border. Usually. Yeah, yeah, and it's just they don't much give a damn if you buy anything or don't, you know. And they, it's just mm -hmm. over from Douglas, mm -hmm. my hometown, mm -hmm. and. Uh, they got a lot of stuff. They sure have a lot of nice stuff. They're in a hell of a good cowboy shop there that deals with the cattle trade there. You know. Most of those border towns are not much fun, really, because they're so so. The further east they get, it. the worse they get. Yeah, I think. That's and true. along Texas, they're much worse than Arizona. That's not a good one. You know, I didn't know that. You're a minor strand in the Ozark culture. <laughs> What's that mean? It means, it means it's that ain't one it. of the minor strands in the Ozark culture. Tell me about that. What was it's, that about that? It's a cowboy. <laughs> well, actually, well, I actually do everything in a minor strand. Well, it's a minor strand. Well, you know? I don't I know if that's an insult or, I read or if it's a, you know, a minor strand. Yeah, book, you said it's book Wayne Earps and his back pocket. Yeah, that. Book of old you know, a lot of people don't no. like to face well, that. Two books out. One of them is Bluegrass. Because they're pining for old they Mary Old England, England and Scotland and Appalachia and so forth. But you know what? Cowboys have traveled down there. There are parts of Arkansas and Missouri. Back, I, I know full time cow punchers in Missouri. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I've never been there. And Where I got. Uh, hell, my place is five so miles uh, further uh, west than you can go. Do you know that? And and Jim McElroy's is a little bit farther west than that. You'll meet him tomorrow. He doesn't know much about the South. Hey, I don't know if I should take you now. We, we went nose and I took him to this place. I told him about it. Boy, there was a whole shelf this long of mm -hmm. cowboy. Oh, it was more than that. Was it a bit more than that, wasn't it? Well, it was like, about like that there. Back then. There was a whole shelf up here that was a uh, University of Oklahoma press book. My goodness. And not bad prices. Well, yeah. some of them are little. Well, they turned out a lot of yeah, good I saw a horse of horse of and I saw the four. Yeah. <coughs> that but there's a, on Chase. Chase? Yeah. yeah. You know what but there's a whole big long shop. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. But what it is, there's an old boy that teaches him <laughs> with the Bible colleges. <laughs> from the Bible east. Problem. He's from the east. And he goes back and he, he loads up a whole right. truckload of books. Books. And all good books. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And he brings them back down there. I've really got some good stuff. Lord, I went wild. He went berserk. He was yeah. he was looking over his books carrying them like this. Yeah. Yeah. I had to get out of there. I, I was going to spot too many. He <laughs> couldn't even get out to look at the yeah. bottom two shelves. <laughs> <It's laughs> right, yeah. Yeah. I bought, you get your yeah. knees dirty in this place because you have to get mm -hmm. way down my side, especially because they're all the way, aren't they? About six foot shelves. Oh, more than that. They're seven, eight sir. foot shelves. Go all, all the way at the floor. So yeah, all the way at the floor. Yeah. <laughs> and they're yeah, all categorized can, in yeah. West and New England. I'll tell you what, we could hit that. We could hit that on. We? <laughs> I didn't I, ask you. I've been there. always looking for what I want. I know her has. I've been there many times. Shoot. Don't yeah, tell how many books I'd love to have is you got. Woolies' books that, I, I that I'm looking man. for, you yeah. know what? Yeah, Did know. you see the 
Movie, Viva, Zapata. Yeah. yeah.